lap, left back to line. Number two following Kenzie and Heavier, but three and mile five. Okay, number two. The first step in connecting the real SIM gear, Cirrus Yoke or Throttle, to Microsoft Flight Sim is to download the latest command mapping file for Microsoft Flight Sim. To do this, simply go to our help website, help.realsimgear.com, click the Downloads button at the top, and then just the Downloads button at the top again. Scroll down into the page under the Microsoft and FSX section and find the default command mapping for Microsoft Flight Sim. The latest version is currently 2.9. When prompted, you may have to choose Keep when downloading the file. Once you've downloaded the file, simply copy that file into your community folder, wherever you may have that, and the real SimGear folder, and then the bin folder. You'll notice that there is a version that's in there already. You can just overwrite that file when prompted. Second step in the process is to make sure that the yoke and or throttle are detected by the real SimGear add-on. To do this, go ahead and start up Microsoft Flight Sim. And once the real SimGear add-on interface shows up, you may or may not see the yoke and throttle in that interface. If you don't see the yoke and or throttle in the interface, simply hit the rescan button. The add-on will go out and rescan for all new hardware and eventually it will find the real SimGear Cirrus yoke and or throttle. Do be advised that when it does show up, the entry may be truncated, but it would say real SimGear Cirrus yoke, probably YOK, as well as real SimGear Cirrus throttle or TRTH. The real SimGear yoke and throttle use a combination of mapping methods to communicate with Microsoft Flight Sim. In general, the axes such as roll, pitch on the yoke, and throttle and mixture on the throttle console are directly mapped using the Microsoft Flight Sim control options. Also, the buttons on the yoke are mapped via the Microsoft control options, while the buttons and knobs on the throttle console are mapped via the real SimGear add-on interface and corresponding command mapping.ini file. Unfortunately, Microsoft does not make it easy for third-party hardware developers such as Real SimGear to submit default profiles for inclusion in the simulator. As such, customers must manually map the axes and buttons in the Microsoft Flight Sim control options. To do this, when Microsoft Flight Sim is open, go to the Options tab across the top and choose Control Options. And you'll notice that you'll have generic entries called Real Sim Gear Cirrus Throttle and or Real Sim Gear Cirrus Yoke, depending on what you have connected, but neither one of them will have any sort of mappings defined. So we need to add these mappings and we'll start with the throttle. So let's click on the throttle. And in the filter, let's go ahead and choose All. Then we can go down to the Power Management, click on that to expand it, choose Mixture, and then we want to go down to the entry called Mixture Axis 0 to 100%. Click in the first box to the left, and then click Start Scanning, and then simply move the axis or the mixture on the throttle console, and it'll auto detect that axis. Then choose Validate. This particular one does not require reverse axis, so uncheck that. Then go up, you can collapse mixture, and let's expand throttle. We want to go to the throttle access entry, click in that box, and again start scanning. Move the throttle, it'll auto detect that axis, and then hit validate. This again does not require reverse access, so go ahead and uncheck that. And let's apply and save. Now moving on to the real SimGear Cirrus yoke. Go ahead and select that. And then in the drop-down section, we're going to go to Flight Control Surfaces, Primary Flight Control Surfaces, and then we'll start with the elevator axis. So click in that box, start scanning, and then move your yoke in and out to set and detect the elevator axis, and then choose Validate. This one does require reverse axis, so leave that checked. 
Next, let's go and find the aileron axis. Click that box, start scanning, move the yoke left and right to detect the axis, and hit validate. This again does require reverse access, so leave that option checked, and then apply and save. Next, we're going to map the buttons on the roll sim gear yoke. So with that selected, choose flight control surfaces, control trimming surfaces, scroll down towards the bottom until you find elevator trim up, nose up, click on that button, click start scanning, move the hat switch in the nose up direction to detect the button, and then hit validate. Next, you're going to do elevator trim down, nose down. So again, click in that box, click start scanning, move the hat switch in the nose down direction, and validate. We're going to do the same thing for the aileron trim. Select that, start scanning, move the aileron trim right, and validate. And then aileron trim left, click the box. Start scanning, move the hat switch to the left to detect, and then hit the validate button. Finally, we want to map the autopilot disconnect button on the yoke. So go ahead and collapse the flight control surfaces and then expand the autopilot section and scroll down to the entry toggle disengage autopilot. Click on the box, click start scanning, and then press the AP disconnect on the yoke to detect, then validate. Finally, you can apply and save. Now, once you've mapped all of the buttons and knobs in the Microsoft Flight Sim control options, go ahead and start up a flight that you've loaded into the sim. You can do a quick check, and you should find that the yoke moves the yoke in the airplane as expected, left and right, in and out. The buttons should all work as expected, and the throttle console, throttle mixture, and all the buttons and knobs should also work as expected. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to the Real SimGear support via support at realsimgear.com or directly via the intercom icon on the Real SimGear website. Thank you. <music>